Betty White in Life with Elizabeth, featuring Del Moore. For one in the life of Elizabeth occurred the day she almost maneuvered the planting of a tree in the middle of the patio. In case you didn't know it, getting a tree planted in the patio has been one of Elizabeth's most unsuccessful projects. Elizabeth, how are you? Are you still going to try to plant a tree in the patio? Well, what kind of a tree? I don't get it. Oh, that, that means okay, oak, an oak tree? <laughs> you think it'll work this time? <laughs> I'm not going to ask you why you were doing that, because if I do, you'll tell me, and I'm in no mood for stupid questions and answers. I came out here to read my paper, and that's what I'm going to do. Excuse me? <laughs> well, that's a fine way to start the afternoon. Brother, here we go again. Alvin. Wait a minute. Turn off the teeth, Elizabeth. <laughs> Put your jaw back in place. Elizabeth. Okay. Now, you're showing all the symptoms of one of your tricks. I'm in no mood for tricks. You tell me exactly what's on your mind and nothing else. Well, I was just thinking that it'd be... Wait a minute. No, well, I was just thinking. Just say, I want a new hat, or I want to paint the house, or I want a hundred dollars. How did you guess? Which one? All of them. <laughs> Elizabeth, you come back here and fight with me. Come on, let's fight up here where it's cooler. <laughs> All right, what's on your mind and no tricks? I still want to plant a tree in the middle of the patio so we'll have some shade. No. And just in case you don't understand English, I'll say it in Spanish. No. And now I'll say it in Italian. No. Say it in German. Nine. I only want one. <laughs> Um, honey, as long as I, you won't let me plant an oak tree, may I put this skinny little thing? Yeah, I guess so. is this? An oak tree. Elizabeth, we both know it'll be 40 years before this thing even looks like a tree. What kind of a scheme did you have in mind? Well, I was going to plant that and then have them move in a big tree the first time you went on a business trip. Mm -hmm. And how are you going to explain the sudden growth? Rich soil? <laughs> Years now, you've been trying to get me to plant a tree out here. Why? Be because of the dead spot. What dead spot? Haven't you ever noticed, Alvin? No. Well, from here to there, the, the air's dead. You can't hear a thing. Honey, you're talking to little Alvin now, not Space Cadet Sam. You know. Really, honey? Yeah. No. You don't believe? Watch this. Just watch. You see? So I figured if we planted a tree there, then the dead spot wouldn't be such a nuisance. Never give up trying, do you? Uh, you watch. Now watch this. One, two, three, eight, nine, ten. You see? Mm -hmm. Do, re, mi. Ti, do. Elizabeth, where's this supposed dead area? Right here? 
All righty, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000, 10,000. You see, I heard every word I said. Every single word. Yeah, but I didn't. You didn't? No, you blacked out at 8,000. I blacked This thing can be dangerous, Elizabeth. Watch it. I think I have a solution, Alvin. Uh, why don't we plant a tree there? Yeah, go ahead. That's all right. Look, uh, stand in there once and yell Alvin again, will you? Real loud. Loud. <laughs> I want to get the phone while... <laughs> I shall leave you at this point, Elizabeth. Good day. Elizabeth, aren't you ashamed? <laughs> the number two in the life of Elizabeth occurred when Alvin tried to repair the TV set with all that high voltage and everything. Naturally, Elizabeth is afraid somebody's going to have to repair Alvin. Alvin, get away from that set. <laughs> Will you stop being a baby and come over here and help me? Really, darling? I, I read about half a dozen times you shouldn't fool around with the television set. Please, get away. It's liable to explode or something. It won't blow up. Will you stand over here and tell me what you see on the screen? Please. I, I, I read where they're just full of electricity. 20 million volts or something. <laughs> Not bolts. Volts. Volts. There's no time to discuss politics. <laughs> Look, I have a little message that I would like to have you read aloud, oh courageous one. No, Alvin, please. Oh, ah, see no. how bravely she approaches no. her doom. No, honey, I... Now, Elizabeth, come on. Now, read, my fearless companion. Where? There on the back of the set. What does it say? Aunt. That's short for antenna. That's not what I meant. Read right there. Vert. That's short for vertical lines. Go on. Gooned. That's short for ground. Oh. You see, Alvin, the but... thing's full of shorts. <laughs> you read everything except what I wanted you to. Look, read right there where it says, there is no danger from high voltage unless you take the... Go on, read it. Back off. Now, there's a warning if I've ever heard I'm one. Back here. <laughs> it says there's no danger from high voltage unless you take the back off. Now, here. Oh. Sit down right here and tell me... Now, Elizabeth, sit down and tell me what happens on the screen as I adjust things. Now, right there. Okay, but be careful. I'll be careful. Anything? Just some lines going this way. Honey, we've called the TV repairman. Can't we wait till he gets here? Because I want to see the Misery Lust Company show, and by the looks of things, he won't be here. To see. <laughs> Anything? Just some more lines going this way. This is funny. I ought to get something on that channel. That's a very powerful station. Maybe they watched the network this afternoon and they can't do a thing with it. <laughs> Anything? Well, it was the best I could do. <laughs> More lines going this way. It looks like somebody tilted somebody's jail. How about now? Now the lines are waving. They're like black and white stripes. It looks like a mile long zebra is racing across the screen. Never mind the clever descriptions, Elizabeth. Tell me what you see on the screen. I am. His front legs have gone by. As soon as his back legs come through, I'll let you know. <laughs> you know something, honey? If, if you had a little, uh, a little stand of some sort with a mirror on it, you could see the screen from back there. Let's not get any stupid feminine ideas, Elizabeth. <laughs> Anything? The till the jail is back. No, really, honey. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not kidding. Like a little music stand or something. You could put it right here, and if it had a mirror on it, couldn't you see the screen from back there? A music stand. Only a woman would say a thing like that. Anything? <laughs> the zebra's in jail. <laughs> See if there's anything else on tonight. Anything? Jail. <laughs> oh, hey! 
Your favorite song's on tomorrow at five. What channel? Four. What's it say? One may hear T for two on four at five. <laughs> sure. Anything? Zebra. Alvin, do you think television will ever replace newspapers? You don't really want an answer, do you? No. Tell me what I'm supposed to say so you can tell your joke. Ask me if I think TV will ever replace newspapers. Will TV ever take the place of newspapers? No. <laughs> I'm glad that's over. No, you're supposed to ask me why. Why won't TV ever replace newspapers? Because you can't put it on the bottom of bird cages. <laughs> Honey, I'm going to have to take the back off. I mean, just when you know you always got a newspaper and you put it... No! No, Alvin, you get away from that set, please. Well, listen, will you stop being a baby? Go over in the corner and shiver while I do this. <laughs> please, darling, I mean it. That, that's stupid as well as dangerous. Elizabeth, don't be such a baby. Now, let's see what we have here. I'll go get the water. Water? What for? Put you out in case you explode. <laughs> Don't explode till I answer the door. Tyler Talented Television Service. Oh, come in, Mr. Tyler. No, I'm Mr. Talented. <laughs> oh, here's that little beast right over here. Yes, uh, we're going to have you up and around in no time. <laughs> Alvin, this is Mr. Talented. Uh, yeah, well, first things first. Let's see. Sure. <laughs> God, he's taking time. I think the, the program's just about to start. Hey, we might get to see most of it at that. <laughs> Bring home a pound of spaghetti. That's what a little woman said, yeah. Nothing wrong with the audio. It's just the video. <laughs> Suppose he doesn't understand jive talk, Daddy O. <laughs> rush, rush, rush. Time is money. That's right. I really know what he was talking about when he said that. I um, um, checked the lead in for you. Anything that you want me to do, just holler. You need any help. <laughs> Those guys are little flasters, you know. Let's see. Yeah. About there. I want to do it. Yeah. It can't possibly be that he's going to use that like I suggested. No, no. No man would do such a thing. Perfect. So you better tell him he can't shave in the living room. Check that old reflection coil. Let's see. Vertical sweeps a little dusty. Sweeps dusty. <laughs> Honey, don't you think you ought to warn him about the high voltage? For oh, goodness sake, the man's an expert. He wouldn't think of a thing. Oh, well, you oh, I'm sorry. Are you all right? It isn't all glamour in the TV service game. <laughs> They're coming to the swamp. Look. That isn't a log. That's an alligator. I know it. Stop clawing my arm. $14. Oh, no. Sorry, lady. That's the best I can do. <laughs> if you need me.
Fourteen dollars. <laughs> oh, did we pay that church fourteen dollars? Be quiet. I'm not kidding. He, he you, chose wait, wait, You were right about the alligator. Look, it is. To the number three in the life of Elizabeth occurred the night they were driving around and got hungry. Well, when you're hungry and you're driving around, what better place to stop than in a drive-in? There they are, waiting for service. It looks like Alvin's getting a little impatient. I'll bet you anything he honks for service and Elizabeth has to calm him down. You know how conservative she is. Where's that girl? Honk louder, honey. She didn't hear you. But you're sure an unpredictable character. <laughs> I bet I know something else you never would have predicted either. What? I feel kind of snug. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sweetie. <laughs> oh, boy. You know, they overdo the, the moon a little bit in love songs, but mm. doesn't it look romantic? Where? Right over there. Just rising over the trolley wire. Oh, yeah, right next to the gas tank. <laughs> no, darling. Now, look, you see the junkyard? Mm-hmm. All right, now, just to the right. You see that column of smoke through the small... <laughs> All right, it's between that and the pickle factory. Beautiful. <laughs> Don't look now. The moon just spelled out Crescent Laundry. <laughs> oh, here comes the girl. Oh. Uh, hey! Did you enjoy the meal, darling? How do you like that? For two cents, I've drive... Oh, now, wait. Now, let's make ourselves a vow. Let's not let anything annoy us. Okay. Just like one of our first dates, okay? Yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, you be real nice to her. All right, all right. Her name's Babs. Here she comes. Oh, Babs. Hi. Nice night. Yeah, hi, Bet. <laughs> I think she hates us. What are you going to have, sweetie? Now, don't rush me. Let me see. What will it be? Now she's fast. Uh, now, remember what we said. We haven't quite decided yet. How about some steak or hamburgers? What's the difference? One day. <laughs> I may as well warn you that my wife has these little spells. She's not too bright. I think she's very humoresque. I thought she was a little more allegro myself. <laughs> Miss, do you charge for bread? No, ma'am. Do you charge for gravy? No, ma'am. <laughs> I'll have some bread and gravy. <laughs> Still think she's humoresque? Don't pay any attention to him, ma'am. I think you have a wonderful sense of humor. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> We mustn't keep you standing there like that. Order something, Alvin. Is there any soup on the menu? It was, but I wiped it off. <laughs> I just knew to do it. Uh, uh, Elizabeth, I heard what you said. You both have a good sense of humor. <laughs> I'll be there in a minute. <laughs> I'll have a hamburger with nothing on it. Just plain, please. Coffee? No, just plain. <laughs> Can't you see I'm busy? Some people are so rudimentary. <laughs> That's one way of putting it. Just bring me a ham on rye, shoestring potatoes. Uh, now let me see. Uh, it was a hamburger and a ham on rye. Right. Shut up! <laughs> uh, hamburger and a ham on rye. Boy, that gal right in her own language. <laughs> Uh, I think she's just upset because that fella keeps horning in. Mm. <laughs> that was a joke, Alan. Yeah, I'll laugh later, honey. <sighs> Isn't it quiet out here in the open? Shut up! <laughs> Cricket. Oh, here comes old leather lungs. <laughs> I brought you some water to crunch your thirst. Crunch, Arthur? Well, maybe she means it has ice in it, Alvin. <laughs> uh, comfy? Well, could I just get my arms up? Oh, sure. <laughs> now, 
Now, uh, let me see. Um, uh, yours was a chicken salad and yours was the apple fritters. Right. No, the hamburger. Hey, ham on rye. With nothing on uh, it. A French fried potato. Shut up! <laughs> you think she meant us? Let's just go home, honey. Come on. Get the oh, train. Oh, we can't do that. She's probably got the order in already. Oh, here we are. <clears throat> I'm sorry I took so long, but the chief is way behind in his orders. Don't you mean chef? No, I mean chief. He's an Indian. <laughs> Share a creep? Nava Joe. <laughs> now, who gets the fried oysters? And not me, I ordered Oh, a... then this must be yours. And that leaves a strawberry waffle for you. No, that's... we ordered a hamburger and a ham sandwich. Oh, I guess I got your order mixed up with the people in the Buick. You sure it wasn't the Linkle? Shut up! <laughs> What's she doing now? <laughs> She's taking my hamburger away from the people in the viewing. There's more beef in that argument than there is in the hamburger. <laughs> oh, she said it this way. Oh. Now, look, now, don't look at me or I'm going to laugh. Honey, I'm hungry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I got there too late. You sure did. Somebody sure opened his big mouth. Now, there's two ways to handle this. Either I get you a new hamburger, or you take a bite out of his strawberry waffle. Uh, get me a new hamburger. And would you tell the chief we're in a hurry? Chief? Don't you mean chef? <laughs> Shut up! Get them before they haul. Have you ever seen anything like this? And I'm starved, too. Well, it's a good thing she left us something to crunch our thirst. Here she comes now. You know that they couldn't cook a hamburger in that length of time. Maybe she's been stealing from the people in the Buick again. Well, here we are. Who gets the chocolate sodium? Look, we ordered a hamburger. Uh, and... uh, mine was the sodium. Oh, good. Then yours must be the cheese hamlet. It is no such thing. Uh, I uh, ordered a ham... E eat the hamlet, Elvin. <laughs> you like it. It's the chief's special receipt. <laughs> no use, darling. We might just as well take what the chief hands out and then leave. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, but this belongs to the people in the Cadillac. <laughs> Well, I had two sips. Look, how could one person make so many mistakes? I never make a mistake. I wrote it all down. See? This is a parking ticket. It's a wonder she didn't bring us an order of fried safety zone. <laughs> Look, I wrote down exactly what I wanted. Look, I'm terribly sorry. Shut up! We don't mind. Easy I'll wait all night long. I don't care. It doesn't... No, over here in the station waggle. <laughs> Say goodbye to the people. Goodbye, goodbye everybody. everybody. And now here to say goodbye to you is the lovely star of our show, Betty White. Thank you, Jeff. And thank you. Thanks for letting us back in again tonight. Incidentally, don't worry about Babs. She doesn't work at the drive-in anymore. She's very happy now. She's lecturing at a charm school. <laughs> Until we see you again. Once more, goodbye, everybody.